This instructional companion on distributed loads falls under the major topic statics, which contains the following two chapters, determinant statics and indeterminate statics. The chapter on determinant statics covers topics such as force systems and vectors, distributed forces, or here what I've called distributed loads, it's also in the MERM a separate section, equations of equilibrium, types of reactions, special members, which two force members uh, was one of those instructional companions, determinacy, types of beams, free body diagrams, 2D equilibrium, which was part of a 2D frame uh, instructional companion, couples, hinges, pulleys, again another instructional companion, axial forces, trusses, method of joints and sections, zero force members, again another instructional companion, catenary cables, and 3D equilibrium. In the MERM, uh, this is actually the first example in this particular chapter uh, in which you see a uh, beam uh, loaded with uh, these two distributed uh, loads. One is uh, triangular uh, from A to B uh, up to 100 pounds per foot. Then it drops to 50 pounds per foot uh, over at C. The dimensions are 24 feet and 36 feet. The author uh, goes and treats, uh, of course, this one uh, as a triangle, uh, but then uh, treats that one as a trapezoid, uh, uses the trapezoid formula both for its um, uh, area and the location of its centroid, but uh, to me, I, I do math, and I love math, but I can never remember those formulas, but I can break this kind of a trapezoid into a rectangular piece and a triangular piece, and I'm going to do that. But first, let's uh, sort of look at the generalization that's provided there in the MERM. Very nice. Uh, let's do that and then come back to this. Sort of the classic diagram in uh, virtually every uh, statics textbook I've ever had, and I've had at least 12 sets, uh, is the following uh, what we call simply supported beam. We'll talk about that in a separate uh, instructional companion. And on that beam is this sort of uh, uh, irregular, almost an amoeba kind of uh, distribution that's uh, from a calculus standpoint, some W sub X, that's a little W, capital W we refer, we reserve for weight, the total weight of something in pounds or newtons, but that's sort of a, a distribution uh, in X where X is measured from the left, and uh, this would be in our integration is going to be 0 to L, uh, the overall length of it. And uh, what you can do is replace uh, this uh, distributed load, uh, W sub X, by a single force, F sub R, and locate it at a position X sub R. Okay. And those are defined uh, with integral expressions. Uh, the first, I'll put this one over here, uh, the F sub R is defined as the, the integral from 0 to L of W X dx. So you put a function in there. Uh, a classic one is the sine um, function and integrate that uh, and you would come up with uh, that load. Uh, and x sub r is defined as, give me enough room here, x sub r, and this is in the MERM, uh, and of course every textbook I've ever seen, uh, integral from 0 to L of x w sub x dx. So what you're doing is taking little in integration uh, calculus idea, you're taking a little strip of that distributed load, wx uh, times dx, and then you're multiplying its location, x, so you're getting sort of an integral there, and then divide it by the total, which again is the integral from 0 to L uh, w sub x dx, and, in, and this of course is our f sub r. Okay, so that's sort of the general way. So uh, if you had a, a variable area, you could do this. Uh, I can tell you that um, if I saw this in the MEPE exam, uh, this would be B. Uh, this might very well be a topic, an afternoon topic for the FE exam, uh, because there they are uh, trying to see whether you know how to do the calculus and integration and things like that. But it was it is unlikely that you would uh, do this on the MEPE. But you'd use the principle to say, well, what this says is is that the the force is the area under the curve that we have. And in our case, uh, with this example that we're going to go back to, we've got uh, actually two triangles and a uh, rectangle. Well, we know where those are. We know the area of a, of a rectangle, the area of a triangle, and we know where the um, 
centroid of a triangle is. And for this particular that particular problem, it's great because it's got uh, the location from two different places. So that's great. So that's going to be a good example to do here. We're going to go back to that in a second. But um, just to make sure you know uh, that it's the area and the location uh, of the uh, F sub R, the X sub R, is really to the centroid. Uh, in fact, I think that's what's used in the uh, MERM is the uh, the symbol. I, I guess you could call it the BMW symbol. But uh, the F sub R goes down through the centroid, and it's uh, across here. It looks like the BMW uh, symbol, and that's called the centroid. Centroid of the area, the balance point uh, of the area. So uh, that's the generalization, uh, but in the exam, uh, I can't imagine you're going to have anything any worse than the example that, we, that I just put up and then we're getting ready to, to quantify. So um, that's a very nice thing in the MERM. Again, if you uh, had that, fine, put in the function. If you could integrate, the first part of the MERM has um, calculus and things in it, but I'd put B. <laughs> Okay, returning to our example here, where we again have a triangle going up to 100 pounds per foot, then a trapezoid dropping from 100 down to 50. Um, well, I'm going to break it up into, say, three uh, different areas instead of the two that the, the author does. And I'm going to label those uh, maybe a little bit differently uh, than he does. But, um, and I'm going to kind of locate them. I'm going to call this first triangle, the centroid is going to be two-thirds from this left over here or one-third from there. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it here, keep it out of the way. Again, the number of arrows, a lot of people ask me, well, how many arrows do you have to put? Well, you just put as many as it just sort of looks right. Uh, um, you know, one's, one's too few, 20's too many, that kind of a thing. So I'm going to put down here, uh, right, and I was trying to put it at sort of the two-thirds point, but, and I draw a little squiggly line uh, to tell me, I did that on the other one, but it didn't say anything, I draw a little squiggly line because that tells me I'm replacing a distributed load with a concentrated load at a position. And I can do that in order to find the reactions, but I can't do that for anything else I'm going to do with this beam. Uh, we're going to look at uh, shear and bending moment diagrams, uh, the, the stress in the beam, the deflection of the beam, uh, a concentrated load versus versus this distributed load is very, very different. But first, for the equilibrium, we can do that. Okay, So that's F1. And then I'm going to take, and uh, I'm going to put a little dotted line through here to separate my rectangle and my triangle. And I'm going to call the uh, rectangle uh, the next one. So I'll try to put it in the middle here. Uh, we've got uh, this one's going to be F2. And then the triangle going to be 1 third from B over, let's see if I can get the squiggle in there. F3. So I've got it really F1, 2, and 3. The author has combined uh, 2 and 3 using, again, the trapezoidal formulas, which you surely could look up, but you know I don't have to look up where a uh, the area and location of a triangle, and certainly not a rectangle, so there is some savings, uh, considerable savings of time uh, doing that. Well, let's write out each one of these. Um, I'm going to do this as we go along here. Uh, F1, okay, and I'm just going to I'm not going to do any symbols here. It's the area of a triangle, so we've got is one half its um, uh, base times the height. But I'm going to do the height first. Do the uh, pounds per foot. So what I've got is one half 100 pounds uh, per foot. And again, I'm leaving off. The author uh, uses LBF and LBM, but uh, in mechanics, uh, it's just LB. That'll be another discussion another day. Times the base, which is the 24 feet. And when you multiply that out, you get uh, 1,200 pounds. And then what I do is uh, note where it's located. And uh, could do that on the next line, which I say uh, at uh, 2 thirds two-thirds of the base, which is 24 feet. So I'll put in there 24 feet, and that equals uh, 16 feet from A, because I want to note where that's from. And I'll put all that information on the free body diagram, uh, but that's another, another instructional companion. Okay. Well, that's F, F1. Uh, let's now do F2. We're not going to get all three of them here. You're going to have to go to the next page, but that's okay. F2 is the rectangle, so it's just the 50 pounds per foot okay, times its base, which is 36 feet. And that's equal to 1,800 pounds. Okay. And where is it located? Well, 
uh, it's at halfway at uh, one half 36 feet uh, which is equal to 18 feet from and now that's halfway from B so that's uh, 18 feet from B okay but that also uh, as we're going to see we're going to want to know where that is from A when we go to do our moment so if we add that uh, 18 to the tw to the 24 it's equal to 42 feet from B from A sorry okay so we got two down now uh, on the next page, but I'll talk about it here, what you've got now, the third one is we have the 100 minus the 50. In this case, that's another 50. But on the exam, this could be 100 and that could be 20. So the height here would be 80. So watch that. This is all you have is just this height right there. It turns out to be the same as 50. So on the next page here. Okay, so now we can write down F three is again it's a triangle one half and I'll go in and put that uh, information in what we've got is a hundred pounds per foot minus fifty pounds per foot so if it wasn't didn't come out to be a nice fifty pounds you'd be able to do that but I want you to see that again times its length which is thirty six feet same as the rectangle and when you multiply that out uh, I'll get down here you end up with nine hundred pounds and that uh, because of um, the other one being 50 is not surprising that's half of the 1800 but where is this this is going to be uh, at I'm going to put it right here at one-third of the 36 feet okay, which equals um, 12 feet okay from B okay one-third from there but again uh, what we're going to want to do is uh, where is that from A? Well, if I add the 12 to the 24, some nice numbers here, uh, it also equals uh, 36 feet, and that's the number we're going to need for the free body diagram. 36 feet from A. Okay. Now, if we look at the total again, I can't do, do a total um, location. Neither one of us did, but F total, okay, which is equal to uh, F1 plus F2 plus F3. If you add up all of those, you're going to end up with uh, 3,900 pounds, which is what uh, the author got as a total, but we have uh, a different uh, location. He still has 1,200, but I've got 2,300. I mean, I've got uh, uh, 1,800 in the 19. Okay? Again, I invite you to visit my website, www.drtomsclassroom.com.